Hello and welcome to Jill Cameron Creations. Today we are going to do a multi-layer card and I'm also going to be doing the color throwdown challenge for this week. And it was yellow, brown, like a goldy yellow color and teal, which was a little different for me. It was not my favorite colors, so it was very, very challenging. And I knew that I wanted to use this entire stamp set and all the images in it. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna save myself so much time by putting everything in here and in a way that I can just slap the die on there and not have to cut anything apart. And yeah, I won't be doing that in the future, but anyway. So here is, I'm gonna stamp this. This is a brand new stamp set for me. I haven't ever used it. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna stamp off a couple of times on some scrap paper so that I make sure that my ink, my stamps are um, conditioned pretty good and I get a good image when I stamp them. And I'm using MFT's uh, Extreme Black ink that is Copic safe since I'm going to be doing some Copic coloring here. And all the colors that I'm using will be on the top right of the screen. And I just did some really quick Copic coloring here. I'm using BG 07, 05, and 02, uh, YR 24, Y19, 15, and 13, and then Y00, 02, and 11, and then the E29 family. I use all of those. And I'm just coloring some flowers and, um, and the kitty cats, and I'm going to use all of those images. And we're just going through the Copic coloring really, really, really quickly. I wish I could color this fast, but I can't. And um, if you've never participated in a color throwdown challenge or a challenge blog of any description for card making, usually there are is a picture that ha inspires some of the colors uh, families that are used that week in some some way. And usually you have like three or four colors that are there and then neutrals to use with it like um, black and gray and white and sometimes like a neutral desert storm kind of color and sometimes those colors are included in the color and then in the the challenge so you have to use those colors this one i saw it and i was like it is so outside of my comfort zone that i'm gonna do it because it is really good to stretch your imagination. Uh, it's a good way to figure out how to use all of your stamps. It's a great way to figure out um, different color combinations that you've never thought of before that you really like in the end. And as I was coloring this, I honestly was like, oh man, this is just gonna be an ugly card. That's just what my thought was when I was coloring it because I don't like the colors. They're not my favorite. I love teal, but I'm not a fan of yellows. I grew up in a yellow bedroom and it wasn't my choice and I, so I, I'm not a fan of yellow in any way shape form or fashion so I just added a few little details here and there to the cats um, they don't stand out a whole lot it was just some added shading and that kind of thing and mostly I'm just doing three color blends for my Copic coloring nothing fancy and um, for all of my cats I used all of the different E family color markers and some of them are a, lot, a little lighter than other ones. And I ended up really liking my kitty cats. The color that I added that was not in there uh, in the challenge was I did add some RO2 to the cheeks and to the inside of the ears of the kitty cats. Because let's face it, you have to have it. So I did that. And this is my darkest kitty. And you can see I'm adding some little stripes and that kind of thing on the kitty. And... I mean, it doesn't really stand out any at all. There's just some little shading spots on the cats. And I really wasn't worried about it. I was more just quickly Copic coloring and getting some color on there. And while we're finishing watching me color here, I'm going to tell a little story. Um, last night... And, well, yeah, if you watch my video from before... The video that's right before this one, it's the masculine Valentine's Day, so it might be a video or two before. But anyway, you hear my Nina kitty, which is my oldest kitty cat, 
meowing at me in the video and me talking to her in that video a little bit. Well, last night, she just wanted attention. Just attention, 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 attention. And she sat in the floor in front of me in the living room while I was watching TV with, with Chip and kept on and on and on. And I ended up having to get down in the floor and literally just rub on her for like 20 minutes. I have no idea what her problem was, but she just wanted attention all day long yesterday. So I've laughed about that and thought that was just the cutest thing ever because she's generally a very solitary kitty. So if you have a cat, I'd love to hear your comments and your kitty cat's names in the comments below. So let me hear about your kitty cats. Um, the other thing I did for my kitties is I colored their noses black. Now, when I went to die cut these, one of the flowers was off. And actually, I got the um, dye a little high on some of them. So, I won't be using the, the method of die cutting like that anymore. I'll just do them individually. No big deal. But it was worth a shot. And... So I got them a little high. You can see on the kitty cat on the right after my big head gets out the way. Um, that my, the one on the, the right there was a little low and I didn't see it. So his head's almost cut off and I was going to have to redo him. But no big deal. So what I ended up doing to make sure that this was, to, to get this as, as close as I could possibly get it, was I ended up snipping off the top left flower because that stem just was going to get cut off completely. So I just trimmed off, just went ahead and cut out that particular flower and did that one separately in my die cut, which was fine. But I just wanted to try it and see if it worked since none of these dies were um, nested inside of each other and you could do it. But I really didn't get doing that so we won't be doing that anymore and taped it down and I'll run it through my die cut machine then I decided that I really really wanted to make sure that this was a layered card and I wanted my images to have some depth to them I didn't want it just flat down and I wanted to use absolutely all of the stamped and colored images that I had when you're doing a multi-layer card it's a good idea to lay everything out so that you can kind of see where all of your images can fit. And at first, and my card base is cut to a top folding A2 size card. And I wasn't about to recut my card base because, yeah, why would I? Um, so what I did instead was made it a side folding landscape card and really liked it. I really ended up liking this card a lot. This um, particular patterned paper is some really old stamping up paper, I believe. And when I cut it, I thought, oh, hey, I'm going to be doing my portrait card. You know, the standard top folding A2 size card. But I ended up not doing that. Well, I didn't recut any of my heels. I, I, I just didn't. There was no point in it. Instead, I used what I had and made it work and I ended up really loving this card it's very very pretty even if I did make it it's very very pretty <laughs> um, but I rediscovered this particular uh, pattern paper as I was cleaning out some pattern papers and stuff and putting cutting them down and making six by six paper packs to put over in my shop I have so much pattern paper I will never in a million 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 years use it so I just I'm going to get rid of some of it. And I wanted three layers of grass in here, but I wanted and I wanted it to be differentiated in between each layer. I wanted you to be able to see it. So what I did was I got some dark brown and made another hillside that's going to go in between these two. And that really really made the card pop and stand out. When you see me hold, fold my hands like that in a video, I'm thinking for just a second, what in the world am I going to do here? I don't like that, that it's flat. And 
you can't really see the difference between it. So I found some brown and got me some brown cardstock and I really liked that and it blended well with my kitty cats and I wanted it to go in between there so that's what I did and I really 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 like it and I'll say it again I really 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 like it anyway so when you're putting together a multi-layer card it's best that you lay everything out in just flat with no adhesive or anything on it in the manner in which you really want it to be or as close as to how you want it to be anyway you can do one of two methods you can take well actually there's a lot of different methods but the ones that I generally like to do are either take a snap a picture of it so that you can go back and put your elements the way that you want them or you can use press and seal and you know that stuff that you use in the kitchen to seal up a bowl or whatever uh, you can use press and seal to put all the images down I didn't do either this time and it still worked out just fine I just looked at it liked it slid it off and went with God on it <laughs> um, I wanted a white background and see this is me doing it in a landscape and I, I instantly did not like that instantly did not like that but I was trying to fool with it see how I liked it and I didn't it was way too crowded it wasn't tall enough there was a lot of extra space at the top of the card and I just didn't like it so I said nope we're not doing that because I don't like that stair step look so slid that off and you turn it sideways and there we go I really liked this so we're going to stack this up and lay it out and I like showing my the the process that I go through not everybody does this in card making and it's it's truly not a I already know what I'm gonna do in my head and it's perfect to, and, and I make the card beforehand no that I, I don't do that the this is me making the card I don't make um, multiple cards to figure this out I don't do uh, an attempt beforehand this is just how it goes and I really liked that layout and I was able to put my sentiment in there and stamp it and get everything straight the way that I liked it and I added a lot of foam tape to it and that's the other thing when you're doing a multi-layer card is you want to make sure that all of your elements are adhered properly so when I start adding foam tape to the bottom edge of all of my grassy hills I'm putting cats and stuff in between them so I need to make sure that the kitty cats and the grass are supported and to do that I literally used the elements themselves to make sure that everything was supported properly I didn't um, worry about putting all of the elements in there with a ton of adhesive on them I just didn't because once if you put that adhesive at the bottom of the grass and then you're sticking a kitty cat behind it with the adhesive on the the foam adhesive on the back of the kitty cat and glue it that grass isn't going anywhere either now if you were gonna mail this card instead of just hand it to somebody if you were going to mail something that has a lot of dimension to it I would probably use a um, bubble mailer to put it in so that it doesn't get smushed and I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment really quick after I get my stuff out of the way and everything was fighting me at this point but that's okay everybody has those days you everybody's fighting you the one thing I didn't do was check to make sure my sentiment was straight I kind of eyeballed it and I think it was but I everything looked a little crooked to me but that was okay you don't have to be perfect in a card it's a handmade card it's okay um, I've seen a couple of different videos that talk about perfection in card making and um, trying to get it as perfect as possible etc and I, I'm if you're happy with it, it you're happy with it it, it doesn't matter if it's 100% straight or not 
Um, I eyeball a lot of things and look at it. I don't, you know, sometimes I will get my T-square ruler out or I use the grid on my mat and grid on blocks a whole lot to line stuff up, which is absolutely okay. Um, but I'm not worried about it being 100% perfect and, or as perf close to perfect as you can get. That's kind of silly to me. Um, so see, I just put that thin strip of foam adhesive down there at the bottom and then I'm going to start stacking up the grassy hills here and make sure they're all lined up at the bottom. I need a drink of water very quickly. Talking for 15 minutes kind of drives your throat out. And I'm using liquid adhesive on some. I didn't stack up all of the hillsides there. I put liquid glue on the bottom of one. I found that I really like using liquid glue a lot better than I like using tape runner for a lot of things. It is... Um, the newer liquid glues don't ooze and run like older liquid glues did and they don't take forever to dry their... Uh, I really like using liquid glue now. So I stacked up two pieces of um, foam tape on his head uh, since he was going to be more towards the front and then added some glue to his little feetsies so they would stick to the grass there. And ta-da! And when you're doing a multi-layer card I don't worry about whether or not it's going to fit in an envelope. I will put it in a slightly bigger envelope or I'll make the envelope myself. Everybody's got an envelope punch board now. And if you don't, there's plenty of patterns online to make a little bit larger um, envelope. And actually maybe I'll put a pattern up for our, an envelope that you could download. That would probably be a good idea. See if I can't come up with that and stick that in my resource library so you can get that um, the sentiment on the the front of the card says sending positive vibes which I absolutely loved and this was just a little fun little card to do and I am so glad I did the color the color throwdown challenge for this this week Add a little uh, sparkle with some aqua shimmer pen and my card is done. I absolutely loved how this came out, even though it might, those are not my favorite colors in the world. So, take a challenge, do an in-depth card like this, a multi-layered card, and see what you come up with. I would love to see the cards that you design. If you tag me on social media, I'll be happy to come and look at them and it would thrill me to know an earthly end. So do that, and if you have any questions about card making or crafting, Copic coloring, any of the above, you can definitely drop me an email or find me on social media at jillcameroncreations.com. Don't forget to head over to my blog and subscribe to my newsletter, and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I thank you so, 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 so much for joining me each and every video. It means the world to me that you watch my videos and enjoy them. Again, thank you. Y'all have a wonderful day.